Yo, was good, people? So, um... Yeah. Uh, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing something that I recently heard about. And it's a Roblox developer and a Roblox YouTuber who... Kinda got into some beef. Now, I will give credit where credit's due. Uh, other YouTubers made this before me. But I'm not necessarily going to repeat all the information. I'm just going to be giving my thoughts on the situation. So, maybe I'll be based, maybe I'll be cringed. Uh, let's find out. So, basically, this Roblox developer, who uh, notably was into some very interesting free-related things, right? And kind of sent that stuff to people. And, um, bear in mind, uh, these were all alleged. I mean, like, yeah, they're screenshots, but still, everything is kind of like... I don't know. I'm just saying allegedly just to be safe, because I don't feel like getting into that heap of bajunkas. But, yeah, allegedly, he did some pretty, uh, saucy stuff. So, basically... He was in a GC with people who he has said that were over 18, in his words, <coughs> but in the same uh, little quote-unquote like explanation, he says that he had no intent of sinning anything like that, yet here he was, you know, openly stating as well that he knew everyone was over 18. Which, I mean, if you were friends with them before, and you knew them, and you knew their age, then, like, yeah, that's fair game, but... And these were people that you just, like, met or came across, and you asked them, like, hey, how old are you? And then you just bombard them with something weird. You know, that's a, that's a different story. It's like, the thing is, even if they are an adult, there's still a bit of a line of, like asking them if they actually are okay with seeing that stuff. Like, just flooding someone with stuff that you have saved is really weird. Not even gonna lie to you. Because, like, the thing is, when it comes to anything weird like that, there's always a question of consensual agreement. So, yeah. I mean... It's a whole weird situation in itself. And then you have the fact that this developer also followed a, a particular fursuit account on uh, their developer Twitter account. So, what do I think of that? Well, the account in question, just for transparency and brutal honesty, posted pictures, pictures of fursuit bosom and butt. So, all in all, it was kind of weird. Now, would I say that following this at all is bad? If I mean, if it's on your personal account, yeah, follow whatever. Because that's your personal account. It's not an account associated with a platform made for kids. You feel me? If you have something connected to a platform that's linked uh, to kids, and you're posting stuff that could be potentially very scarring for young and undeveloped minds or following something that could potentially make your followers witness that because of the way the Twitter algorithm works. Yeah. You're technically endangering young minds, which is not cool at all. Now, one of the other things I figured is important to mention is the fact that um, I've been mentioning this YouTuber quite a bit lately. They've kind of been popping up everywhere, and it's been hard for me to just kind of, you know, take a few steps out of the door and be like, eh, I don't want to mess with this anymore, because the thing with the internet and its algorithms is if you've been into it at one point, it's going to keep coming back. It's, it sucks. And the thing is, it's not that I hate his content now, I don't hate him as a person, it's just... Like, the the dude in question just... He kinda sunk for me. 
it's not that I necessarily lost my respect for him, it's just like, I couldn't take him seriously anymore. Like, yeah, he's still a hero for the community, like, kudos to what he does, but, like, some of the stuff that he did, and some of the jokes that he's cracked, and some of the things he said, joke or not, just, bro. I get that you're, like, supposed to be the unhinged, edgy vigilante of Roblox, but, come on. And obviously, no hate towards him. Like, I literally stood by him. I still stand by what he did. Calling those staff out for following those accounts, like he did, was the right thing to do. Because they shouldn't be doing that. And then you have the other staff who was literally posting, like, pictures of themselves. I'm just like, bro. So, I completely understand where he's coming from. People shouldn't be doing this. Especially, uh, when it comes to a platform that's completely filled with kids. Because, like, I can bet you for a fact, there's not as many people as you would think that are above the age of, like, 12 on Roblox. Most of the players on Roblox are not on the uh, Discord Terms of Service age checklist. Which makes it even funnier when you take into consideration the fact that so many of the people on Roblox get Discord just because of how much people mention it. And then this makes them suscept susceptible to, you know, older people who are kind of messed up in the head. Which I know that's a bit unrelated to the subject, but my point still stands. Now regarding the furry community, I wanted to go ahead and make the second half of this video a message for you guys. So, as a member of this community, I can safely say for a fact that I know my one opinion ain't gonna change anything. It's like a mosh pit, and I'm just one guy who's not jumping, while everyone else is practically tumbling all over the place, and practically walking on me, with shouting and screaming going on. So, I feel like we need to work on this community, because there's a problem, and that problem is... Well, <laughs> we're kind of dumb. Because, like, look, all those anti-furries and furry haters always say, Oh, you want to be animals? Well, then blah, 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 blah. I mean, fellas, we kind of are acting like animals. Because we let these bad apples into our community, and then we act feral when someone calls us out and acts like we're supporting that stuff. Because, in a way... I get it, you know, we can't necessarily monitor the entire community, but we can at least all come together as a collective conscious and somewhat agree that, like, hey, this ain't this ain't what this is about. This ain't it, chief. And we can just say, like, hey, you're not one of us. Get the freak out. Because if you ask me, there's two categories of furry. You have furries and freaks. Freaks are the bad apples. Understanding the difference is the most important thing. Regular furries are people who have, like, personas. They invest in, like, furry products, arts. Uh, whether it be safe for work or not, they invest in it nonetheless. And here's the thing. Every fandom, every community, it's going to have not safe for work. It's, it's literally just the golden thumb of the internet at this point. If it exists, you know the drill. There is going to be something weird of it. But, basically, all in all, it's it's just people who kind of spend time doing, well, as simple as it is, furry-related things. Some of them go to conventions, some of them have fursuits, some of them draw furry art, some of them purchase furry art, some of them do, like, stories, some of them do animation, some of them do music... It's a very fast, vast, not fast, vast community. And that vastness really shows when you look at, like, the grand scale of it and how much differentiation there is. For Reeks, on the other hand, are people like, uh, Caro, Glitch, all those other people. So... There is a difference. I know a lot of people want to assume that every single furry likes animals a little too much. And you know what? I'll give them credit where credit's due. It is a bit of a funny assumption. But... That just ain't the case. 
And look, I've even seen non-furries who've openly said that they would definitely not pass on low punny. So listen, we all got a bit of weirdness in us. Uh, sorry for the pause, I'm trying to think of what to say next. But, yeah, all in all, there's just a lot of stuff this community could fix about itself. And one of those things is definitely the, um, overweighing the persona instead of the person. Because, yeah. There is a very serious problem where people kind of just neglect the person behind the persona and you also have the problem of teenagers being obnoxiously uh, saucy with people regardless of who those people are they could be other teenagers they could even be adults and yeah this ends up getting both of the people in trouble and because of how you know saucy and accepting the uh, furry fandom is <laughs> Uh, that, that leads to problems. Am I saying we should be less accepting? No. We should, we should accept everyone who's not doing something messed up and against humanity's laws or rules or whatever. But what we shouldn't accept is bad apples, people who are trying to find loopholes in the system to do messed up things, art thieves, people who, uh, <laughs> enjoy certain things a little too much. And most importantly, the people who are hypocrites. You have no idea how many hypocrites I've seen in this freaking fandom. It is annoying. I've seen people who will literally point and throw fingers at someone for drawing a certain thing, but then you check like their favorited and liked posts, and uh, you notice, <clears throat> you know, they have a lot of that particular thing favorited and it's just like bruh I mean yeah I get it sometimes people are gonna be hypocrites some people are gonna be able to accept their own likings or desires that's some of the cases for uh, phobic people of any criteria It's because they just can't really accept it or understand it or they don't want to understand it or maybe they're like just straight up afraid of it. There's a lot of reasons, but the thing that's common throughout all of them is there's some kind of neuron that's not necessarily connecting between the currently existing knowledge of what it is and the new forming knowledge that the brain creates upon learning new things. There's like a disconnected and disjointment between the two. So, all in all, my thoughts on this situation is, um, firstly, if you know who I'm talking about, don't send harassment to anyone. Alright? Sure, the developer was freaking stupid, but like, bro, don't go out of your way to send like death threats or docs or stupid stuff like that, because bro... You're gonna you're gonna be messing up someone's damn life. You're gonna be like ruining everything for them. Like even if they did messed up stuff, it's not your role to be the vigilante of the internet. If they did something messed up and illegal, you gotta report it to people who can actually do something instead of you just being like, ah, ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna find your dog. Like, that's not gonna accomplish anything. You're only giving them more attention and. In the end, giving them attention is not going to fix anything. If anything, you're just wasting your time. So, the next time a controversy comes out and you actually have evidence against that controversial thing that someone did, don't make a commentary video about it right off the bat. Like, I know it's tempting, but just file a report or something and then make a video discussing it so people can be aware. You should prioritize law first over YouTube views. Um, I'm looking at you other commentary channels like myself, which I'm not necessarily a commentary channel, but I do make commentary videos a lot. I like discussing my opinions. And regarding the YouTuber, 
you know what? Sure, you made edgy jokes. Sure, I've not particularly been a fan of them. But you know what? As a member of the community that you so solifully hate, I approve of what you're doing. You're at least keeping the platform safe. You're keeping kids safe. So you know what? I can respect that. Just don't don't go out of your way to commit a freaking war crime or something, please. <laughs> That's all I ask. You seem like the kind of person who wouldn't necessarily be as edgy in person as they are on, you know, their Twitter, but... If you are, then... I mean, well, shame on me, I guess. You know, poop on my grave and burn the rose, I guess. <coughs> Anyways... Sorry about this video not being as, like, happy and chuckle-nutty as usual. I just... I'm not necessarily able to make a joke out of this. Because I kind of realize, like, this ties into the big, uh, big problem that the furry community has. We're just way too saucy, and we're way too open about that sauce. Because, like, look, you can be saucy, you can be extra saucy with a pinch of spice even, but you keep that sauce to yourself, or at least keep it to the other consenting adults. Please. So, yeah, this has been Straw sharing their maybe based, maybe cringe opinion on a situation that's happening in the world as we speak. If you liked the video, then, well, you can like it. If you didn't like it, then, well, the choice is up to you. You can either leave it blank or you can just dislike it. But, either way, make sure to share your thoughts on things in the comments down below because I do like, you know, discussing things with people, uh, like, thinking and brainstorming about like you know what what is the root what's what's causing this how can we fix it and who should we start with first like wh getting rid of who would make what better it's like getting rid of someone doesn't necessarily mean like just straight up bleeding them you just you just exile them from the community or just don't accept them as a part of it anymore Imagine it like having a tyrant, right? You dethrone them, and then you basically... <coughs> you basically just kick them out. It's like being evicted. They can't come back, and if they do, they'll probably get... Well, quite frankly, chat on. It's <laughs> not that complicated. So, yeah. If you guys want to talk about people who you know are in the community and are better off gone, just comment. You know, I'm, I'm open to talk about it. I'm open to share my thoughts on other people. I'm open to just hear what you guys think, you know? So, like, don't be afraid to share your thoughts. Because, like, for real, sharing your thoughts is the best way to kind of come to a mutual agreement or conclusion is, you know, sharing what your brain's storming up there. It's some of the ways that a lot of the biggest debates in the world have gotten solved is people just being like, hey, instead of like having a giant habuckle over this, let's sit down and talk about how we could fix it. And although it's rare for us humans to do that, I mean, just take a look at what's happening in the world right now. <laughs> um, there's a lot of stuff we can do to just better off improve society. Like... We don't have to keep it like this. We don't have to keep being like, oh, why'd you do this? And then we just sit back and just, like, let it keep happening. We can take, you know, proper action. And, like, that's the thing. You know what? I'm not going to try to pretend I'm some kind of hero either. I've made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. We, every single human in the world makes freaking mistakes. And if you don't think humans make mistakes, then, well, you're not very smart, are you? But... Literally, every human makes mistakes. Some worse than others. Some of them sparked by trauma. Some of them sparked by choice. And you know what? I like the imperfections. Because if everyone was perfect, the world would suck. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any reason to be nice to each other. Because everyone would just constantly be equal. And everyone would be like, <laughs> whatever. So, like, yeah, that's kind of why... Worldwide perfection sucks. Because your flaws are what make you kind of enjoyable in a way. Like, I've been told multiple times that my shyness makes me, <clears throat> in their words, not mine, makes me 
cute. And I just look at them, I'm like, bruh. But in their eyes, that just makes it even better. So yeah, my shyness is a good thing for others. Not necessarily for me, because I can't socialize worth a crap, but... Yeah. Other people find it cute. So, you know what? Whatever. Next thing you know, they're going to be asking me to go, like, blip or something. Do a little blip. Either way, um, I feel like the most important thing with any community right now and society as a whole, we all kind of just need to, like, collectively come together and intertwine our hands and say, like, bro, let's fix this one step at a time, all right? And to the people who will hold a knife against someone's throat for something they did in the past, like, what, or not in the past, someone who's done something longer than three years ago, or like four or five, or heck, even two, and they've stopped doing, like, they've already paid their consequences, because the thing is, change doesn't happen without consequence. Change is impossible without consequence. So, think about that one. Like, if you're about to go to bed, let that thought sort of soak into your mind. Don't let it keep you up, just, you know, think on it. Because, you know, the fact that change can't happen without consequence kind of says a lot about the world as we are today compared to, what, 70 years ago? A lot of consequences had to happen for us to even get where we are today. Lives were lost, lies were told, and manipulation was done, and... Overall, a lot of messed up people ended up paying the price, and, well, it ended up bringing us closer to, well, what we would like to call equality. And sure, not everyone is treated equal still, which is unfortunate, but we're at least closer than we were before, and that's saying a lot. It's like, you think about the wars, you think about, you know, United States history, you think about you know, all of the global superpowers and their leaders and, you know, all of that, you kind of realize that, like, if consequences didn't exist, World War Two would still probably be happening. <laughs> and, yeah, that's the whole reason why consequence is a part of life and is a part of change. is because nothing has no consequence. And change is a result of consequence, whether it be good consequence or bad. And you know what's crazy? Consequence literally builds into karma. So... Yeah, if you believe in karma, then you believe in consequence. There's there's no beating around the bush for that. Anyways, yeah. This is the actual the end of the video this time. I went off rambling again. <coughs> but yeah, this is Straw signing out. Once again. So, uh, yeah. Remember, um, Red Brick Industrial and I...